What's up, Set Gang? In this video, we're going to be going over the pros and cons of the OnePlus N35G. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, hopefully you guys are having a good day. Hopefully everyone is safe out there. We have the OnePlus N30 5G right here, and I'm honestly really liking this device so far. If you guys have your own pros and cons, definitely leave them in the comment section down below. But let's get through these pros and cons, first and foremost, starting with the pros. So the first pro I found about this device is we actually have some really decent performance from the Snapdragon 695 processor. Now, we didn't upgrade from last year's processor, which kind of sucks, but we did actually get two gigabytes more of RAM so that's great to see but with this performance you're definitely able to play your games that you want to play in here such as Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG and they actually run very very well. Genshin Impact in particular on medium graphic settings and 30 frames per second has definitely been running better than I've been seeing on other devices that actually have the Snapdragon 695 processor. It may have to do with that 8 gigabytes of RAM. I definitely was hoping that we were at least going to get the Snapdragon 6 Gen 1 inside this device, but so far for $299, honestly, it's, it's a decent performance. Our second pro is the battery life on this device and the charging. As you guys know, we do have a 50 watt uh, Supervoke charger in here, which we're gonna talk about right now, but the battery in general on this device is amazing. Not only does the battery on this device charge quickly, but it will last you the full day with its 5,000 milliamp battery. And that was actually an upgrade over the N20 from last year, which was only 4,500 milliamps. So we get a 500 milliamp bump on the N35 G right here. What's even cooler is we get a 50 watt Super Voke charger inside of the box, which many other devices around this price tag, again, not only getting a charger in the box, but they don't get chargers like OnePlus gives. So we have a 50 watt Super Voke charger inside of this box. This is gonna be capable of charging the OnePlus N35G from zero to 80% in only 30 minutes. So amazing charging, amazing battery on this device. I think you guys are gonna be thrilled for any of those people that are constantly gaming on their phone. This is going to be a phone for those those gamers out there that don't wanna spend six, seven hundred, a thousand dollars on a on a phone, but you get decent processing power in here to play your video games, your Call of Duty Mobile, your, your PUBG and all that. But also you can get back on the game in about 30 minutes when you charge this device, you know, up to 80%. So amazing stuff right there. Had to had to talk about that. Now our third pro is absolutely going to have to be the extremely loud speakers on this device. I guess OnePlus gave us something called 200% volume on here. So it definitely makes it louder. But um, the big thing on this device is we have stereo speakers and around this price tag, beautiful to see. Love that. But they're actually decent stereo speakers. They're not like tinny or anything. They're clear they're loud and they're extremely crisp. So you guys are going to have a great experience watching Netflix, YouTube, and of course, listening to your favorite songs on this as well. And for this pro, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. I know it's not going to do this phone justice, but if you haven't seen the speaker yet, let's go ahead and show you that right now. So the speaker is definitely one of those things that makes this feel like a more premium headset, more so like a flagship than a budget phone. Our fourth pro on this device for all of those audio files out there, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at the bottom of the phone. So for anybody that wants to run their triple driver earbuds through there or their you know, dual driver earbuds through here. And they have some nice Sennheisers or AKG earbuds or whatever. And honestly, it's just more convenient if you just wanna plug this in and you don't have to connect your wireless earbuds or go out and buy them if you guys don't have those. So always great to have a uh, headphone jack at the bottom of the phone and that's getting less and less popular as the years go by. And of course the last pro I'm going to talk about on the OnePlus N30 and this is something that I know is kind of going to piss people off but this display has doubled the refresh rate of the N20 5G or the N20, the OnePlus N20. I would rather have and I, and I know this doesn't have an AMOLED display this time around and the N20 did but I don't know how you guys feel. Let me know in the comment section down below. I would rather have a 120 hertz refresh rate than an AMOLED display because I feel like in general, this LCD display looks perfect in my eyes. Um, I've been using it for the last month, watching YouTube videos on it, watching Netflix, watching HBO Max, 
and it's been completely fine. I think it's a beautiful display. I think looking at it for long periods of time isn't stressful on the eyes, of course, with my adjusted brightness, but I would rather take 120 hertz refresh rate any day of the week instead of an AMOLED display with only 60 hertz. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I think my eyes in general are just adjusted to a high refresh rate now. And of course, getting into the dreaded cons of this device. Again, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. What are your cons on the OnePlus N30? I'd love to know. But for my first con on this device is we have the same processor as last year. Now, I'm not gonna be too nitpicky because we did get two extra gigabytes of RAM, but I was hoping for at least the Snapdragon Gen 1 just because it would make this phone feel more like a, a flagship device. But at $299 for what you're getting, you get those earbuds from now until June 30th. I think this is a great device and I think the processor is running great so far. But I definitely had to say that, that there was no upgrade in the processor from last year. So that's always kind of unfortunate. Second con about this device, speaking of things from last year, the AMOLED display is missing that we also had from last year. Again, I had to bring this up for anybody that doesn't care about the refresh rate. We don't have an AMOLED display like we had on here last year. Even though I think this display is perfect, I think the colors on it are great. I think you're gonna have a good viewing experience on YouTube and Netflix and social media and stuff. Just letting you guys know it doesn't have an AMOLED display, but we have twice the refresh rate of last year. So we don't have 60, we don't have 90 hertz. We have 120 hertz refresh rate on this display on the N35 G. So. It's always up to you making that decision. Our third con, and this is probably my biggest one yet, is that we only have one operating system update. So only one year of operating system updates. We go from Android 13 to Android 14. And in the past, obviously OnePlus isn't the greatest at this. However, we do have bi-monthly security patch updates on this device for the next three years. So it's definitely gonna make this device still relevant. I still feel like you guys can use this for a good three, four years, but just know that we're going to be capped out at Android 14. Our next con on this device is that the, of course, Google Pixel 6a exists, which offers a more consistent camera experience, an OLED display, uh, an IP67 water and dust resistance, and even at the point of this time, um, even a year in, we get two more years of OS updates on the Pixel 6a. And, um, you know, the price fluctuates on that device a lot, so I'm not going to set it to $299. It keeps going on sale for $299, but the last time I checked, it's about $344. So just know you are going to be paying about 40 to 50 more dollars than the OnePlus N35G when looking at the Pixel 6a. Um, I, I think it is worth it, honestly, to be quite honest. In my honest opinion, I'm going to say what device I would choose, and I would choose the Pixel 6a over this device. Um, to be quite honest, just because that's kind of my type of thing. I love stock Android devices and I kind of like its style and, you know, it's quick shutter speed and it's consistent camera and stuff like that. But, you know, to each their own, um, the OnePlus N35G comes with things that we they don't get on there for the time being. We get, of course, those wireless earbuds with that deal. Of course, we get a charger inside the box and not just, you know, a regular charger. We get a Super Vogue 50 watt um, our charger inside of there. So we do have some stuff on this device that the Pixel 6a hasn't acquired. Also 120 hertz refresh rate on here. Um, so it's always up to you. Honestly, I think either way you go, it's going to be fine. Obviously, one thing that you get with OnePlus is you guys are going to have a new refreshing UI. And I think that's something that a lot of people want in this time. So, you know, to each their own, I, would, I could go either way, honestly. I feel like a lot of people could as well, but in my opinion, I would go with the Pixel 6a over the OnePlus N30, just being truthful. Our last con is going to be extremely nitpicky. This is super, super nitpicky, but I'm gonna be showing you the entire time that I was holding this phone. It definitely leaves a ton of smudges, as you guys can see, and I kind of have sweaty hands. I know this is kind of nasty, holding this in my hand for about 20 minutes straight, but this leaves a ton of smudges. Um, and if you didn't have a case, or you guys don't really like wearing cases, just know this is going to leave a ton of smudges. I was hoping that they were going to have this type of film that the new Moto G Stylus 5G came out with. And I hope they do that next year instead of this super, super um, fingerprint magnet back. I was hoping they were gonna bring that out, but honestly, 
it's super nitpicky at the end of the day. It's very few and far between the people that use a phone without a case nowadays. So honestly, this is just one of my nitpicky cons on the OnePlus N35G. But all in all, I feel like this is a beautiful phone. We're gonna go into more detail on the camera and everything else later on, but I'm really, really enjoying this device and I don't think people would be mad at this at all paying $299 getting what you get inside of the box. So the OnePlus N35G is valid. Let me know what you guys think of the comment section down below if you guys have the device. Um, if you don't, still let me know if you're gonna pick up this device or pick up some else. But hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully this helped you with your buying um, decision. But again, this has been some fun from TechRite. Hopefully you guys have a beautiful day. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. If you guys wanna be a part of the tech gang, of course hit that subscribe button, the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. This has been some fun from TechRite. Peace out, Tekken.